The Dark Angel by Meredith Ann Pierce, Chapter 9, Eclipse. The people of the Mahambai were tall and dark. They had the darkest skin Ariel had ever seen, a dusky rose hue, the color of cinnamon. They wore loose, sleeveless smocks of pure white seed silk and carried long, knobbed walking st staves. They owned few possessions, spoke softly to each other as wind among reeds, and their hair grew close to the scalp in coarse, tight curls. They were nomads, Ariel discovered, combing the desert for game and other foodstuffs that they had taken away that they had taken away her torn and bloody kirtle and given her one of their own garments, Ariel realized the first time she had awakened clear-headed enough to take in her surroundings. Their leader, Ariel learned, was, was called Oro Otto Tua, a tall, spare woman of middle years and few words. She tended Ariel's wound with poultices and herbal broth. At first, Ariel slept much, but gradually a soul star rose toward its zenith, and Oceanus waned. She felt her strength beginning to return. The Ma'a and Bai bore her along with them as they moved east. At one point, after much travel and little resting, the Ma'a and Bai laid their camp next to a stony wall, drove their staves into the sand, and hung their canopies from them. Ariel had laid in the shade of one of the of one of these. And Oro Atotu knelt beside her, feeding her choice bits of a roasted desert hare. Ariel turned to her. She was feeling well enough for conversation. The desert cannot hold much food, said Ariel. Oro Atotu tore off another tender bit. That is enough, she said. Ariel savored the taste of the morsel in her mouth. Still, she said, there would be more for your people if I were not here. She had not touched Maduro's velvet pouch, now worn on a thong about her neck, since she had been with the desert folk. Their hospitality did not permit a guest to draw upon her own provisions. The desert woman checked the poultices on Ariel's throat and added a few drops of water from a shallow dish on the sand beside her. The pendalan has asked us to see to you, she said, and that is enough. The pender lion, said Ariel, puzzled. Who is that? Laura Otto, too, gave a throaty laugh. Her wise, pale eyes, pale brown eyes danced. Ha, 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 ha. You do not know. He is the one who rescued you. Ariel gazed at her, surprised. The lion, the other nodded. Ariel glanced down. She had occasionally heard the people of her village exclaim oaths of, By the Pender Lion. Oh, by the Pendar Lawn, not Lion. Okay. But she had never used the expression herself. But, she said at last, What does it mean? Pendalan, her physician explained. It means Warden of Pendar. That her voice held no rancor encouraged Ariel to inquire further. And where is Pendar? she asked. Ora Otto, too, looked at her in surprise. Why this? she exclaimed with a nod that took in the that they took in everything around them. All that you see about you to the horizon and beyond. But I thought, said Ariel, I thought that Pendar was a great land of cities and ancient wisdom. Talb said the old ones lived in Pendar. The desert woman nodded sadly, offered Ariel the last morsel, but Ariel shook her head. She'd eaten enough. Once, little pale one, once, their glory is all laid waste now, she fed the tidbit to one of the thin, sandy camp dogs and washed the grease from her dark fingers in the, in the shallow bowl. The old ones are few and far between. They are growing afraid at the outside. Most of them hide in their domed cities, now far from each other, shut off from the world. She shook the water from her hands and waved them slowly to dry. They come out so seldom now that most of your people think they all died years ago. The wise woman shook her head. Not so. You should know better. What does the Penderlon do? inquired Ariel. Ah, said 
or art or two. He runs back and forth over the land, guarding the borders and looking to the safety of his people. Who are his people? said Ariel. The dark chiefess gave another low, throaty laugh and gestured toward the Ma'ambai youths filling their water skins at the well. Ha 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 ha! We are his people, she said. She looked up at two skyhawks circling lazily in the black heavens. Those are his people, she nodded toward a dune where three sand rats scampered and played. There are his people, she said, and there. In the distance, a herd of gazelle leapt and bounded like tumblers. Every creature within his borders is one of his people, Ora Atotu said. He is your ruler, then, said Ariel, but the dark woman shook her head. He does not rule us. No one can rule us. No one can rule anyone who does not first agree to the ruling. She smiled, a trace at Ariel, and patted the little camp dog, which was whining for more tidbits. One must rule oneself. But, began Ariel, puzzled, but if the Penderlon... He is our warden and our guide, the chiefess told her, and everyone is free. Ariel shook her head, still not understanding. But do you, or Ata too, not rule the Ma'ambai? I but lead them, the other replied, and they follow only so long as they choose. Ariel considered it for a long moment. Then, and did not understand. But what am I now? she asked finally. Now that I am within the lion's borders, have I too become one of his people? No, her companion answered, getting up from the sand and shooing the small dog away. You belong still to the Avaclan, though you are the Leosor's guest and under his protection now. And who is the warden of the Averick? asked Ariel. She had never before heard of an Averick lawn. The Star Horse, said the other, straightening. The Equestral. The Equestral. The Equestel. The Equestel, cried Ariel, sitting up suddenly. But I am going, the chief dis nodded. Yes, the Pendelon has told me. And he has said you will return to, he will return to aid you. When? cried Ariel, reaching out to stay, or or Otto too from going. When will he return? When you are healed, the woman answered. Lie down now and rest. I must go work on the new walking stick I am carving, and you must not disturb the poultice on your neck. Then she turned and ducked gracefully out from under the canopy. How long? insisted Ariel. Already her head swam from sitting. Ora Otto too paused and turned, gave a slight shrug, and shook her head. He comes when he comes, she replied. He did not say how long. Rest now, little pale one, and patience. You must wait. And we are going to pause there. <laughs>